In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members throughout the world to come together in prayer and vigil. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which, through word and sacrament, we share in his victory over death. As we await the risen Christ, let us hear and remember how God created us and promises his renewal to us throughout our lives. Let us pray that through this Easter celebration, we and all God's people may be recreated by his saving love. We hear our first reading from the book of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal in the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Let us pray for God's breath of life to renew and transform us. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. In your love you formed the universe out of nothing. You moulded us from the clay of the earth. You gave us your life-giving breath and gave us companions with whom to share life. Send forth again your life-giving spirit to renew and recreate your world in your image. O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. We listen to our second reading from the book of Exodus.
the Lord said to Moses, Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong breath of wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You heard the agony of your people as they cried out from their slavery, and you gave them Moses to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear the cry of the enslaved and homeless today, and lead us through the turbulent sea of life to our true home with you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statuses and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Let us pray that God will give to the thirsting a new outpouring of his refreshing spirit. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, 
When we are overwhelmed by the wasting world, gather us again and renew us. Create in us a new heart and a renewed spirit, that we may be a people prepared to live in your land and walk in your ways, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. We we'll listen to our final reading from Ezekiel. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And the hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Let us pray that God will breathe new life into his weary creation. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You bring life from the darkest valley of death. When hope is lost and our dry bones are scattered in shame, speak your word to your broken people, that we may stand confidently before you and breathe your spirit into us that we might live. O Lord, our Maker, and Redeemer. Amen. So I invite you to follow us out to 
the doorway of the church where we'll be lighting the bonfire. Eternal God, who made this holy night to shine with the brightness of the one true light, set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, at the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him. And all ages to him be glory and power, now and to the ages of ages. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard and keep us. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
too much of a flame, I think. I'm very worried about the, the, the wind. To sacrifice the order of service <laughs> for the light of Christ, that's no problem. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I think we should lift our candles high and as I read out the Easter proclamation, this is the night when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory now and to the ages of ages. Amen. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the lying, linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. When the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciple, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
First of all, a very happy Easter to you. I know it feels a bit odd wishing people a happy Easter uh, on Easter Eve, as it were, but of course, uh, from the Jewish perspective, days began at sunset, the sun was set. So now we are into Easter morning. I don't know if any of you have been back to your old school. If you do, it could be rather a strange experience, because many things are exactly almost as you have left them. Uh, maybe you carved your name in the desk, I'm sure they probably got rid of that by now. But some things are familiar, but other things, they will have changed immensely. Things like blackboards or chalkboards are no longer there. You have sort of tech, high tech, and screens and touch screens and everything else. New buildings may have been added, facilities updated, new technology installed. And it may actually seem just a little bit smaller than you remember it. You feel perhaps you've outgrown it. And certainly if it's the primary school that you go back to, your body certainly won't now fit onto those tiny little chairs. And yet you can be taken back. It might be something like the smell of the polish or just the sight of the desk. So they can bring back the times when, for you, the school was almost the whole of your world. And then you can remember maybe what it felt like as you finally got to the end of your time at that school, your last day there. And the way that that whole way of life just ended. You went out of the school at the end, at the beginning of the summer holidays, and then you gone. You were in another school, another setting, another life. Whatever you're thinking, what could life hold as you left that school? Could it hold beyond that classroom? Now, just when Jesus' followers think that his story is all over, the plot gives a new twist. And as the new week dawns, John tells us how the grieving Mary Magdalene, she comes to the tomb to see that its heavy ceiling stone has been rolled away and removed. And she's shocked. She's shocked to find just an open grave. And she assumes that the body's been stolen. So she runs to get the disciples. And Peter and John, they go inside, and they discover that the Lord's body has indeed gone. So the obvious conclusion is that a robber has been at work. We quite naturally interpret the unfamiliar in the light of what we already know about the world. But the explanation just doesn't fit the facts that they find there. The grave cloths, they're still there. What robber would have unwrapped the body before taking it, or indeed leave the coverings behind with the head section, we're told, separately and neatly rolled up by itself. So John, the other disciple, senses that something more is going on here. He doesn't know yet what it is, and he doesn't understand what's going on, but he dares to believe that this Jesus, extraordinary in life, is at the centre of something more amazing to come. It's yet the whole story, but he knows it's not just an old story of a dead hero. So left alone and weeping, Mary looks into the tomb and she sees two angels. Where did they come from? They sit exactly where Jesus' body had lain, and yet they ask her, why? Why is she weeping? The events grow stranger by the minute. She turns to see another figure behind her. He too seems to have come from nowhere. And common sense tells her that it's probably the gardener. And if so, perhaps he knows where Jesus' body has been taken. As he answers, as he addresses her by her name, that one word, Mary, reaches deep into her, and she knows that it's Jesus who's there before her alive. But this isn't just a joyful reunion of old friends. Jesus 
instructs Mary to go to the disciples, who he now refers to as my brothers, and tell them of his ascension. Now, unlike Lazarus, whom Jesus brought back to life in this world in a resuscitated body, Jesus himself now brings in God's new creation in a resurrection body. And that's a very different sort of thing. And this may partly explain why Mary doesn't really recognise who Jesus is at first. And, of course, he is the last person that she would expect to see standing before her, overflowing with life, after all that his body had been through. So as we read the story, we too may have our surprises. Jesus has just risen, risen from the dead, defeating death, confounding his enemies, and it is indeed the most unprecedented, the most unique event in history. Yet the resurrected Jesus first shows himself in a garden to a woman, to one at that time with very little status, either among his earthly followers or the culture of the time. In the culture of the time, women weren't even allowed to give testimony as witnesses. So why did Jesus not proclaim God's vindication directly to his enemies? Why didn't he go to the Sanhedrin? Or why didn't he not pilot up and show them? God's kingdom ways are really beyond our understanding, our earthly ways. Now serving Jesus as Lord brings change into our lives. We may long for him to restore aspects of our lives to how they were. But Jesus' life growing in us makes things new makes things different, transforms things. So in life, as we face the end of things, the end of seasons in our lives, like maybe a failed ambition, or maybe a fruitful ministry, or a job well done, or a child now grown up and moved, or as we mourn losses in our then we have this image of the risen Jesus meeting us in the places where we least expect him. Now in a sense we are going through such a time like that right now. Covid and its effects over the past couple of years have they've had an immense impact on the world that we knew, the church that we knew. It is really very much a time of change, a time of uncertainty. And like Mary Magdalene, we can be tempted to hold on to the Lord as we have known him on our journey so far. But we are to keep following, and we are to allow our lives to be transformed in ways that perhaps we could never have imagined. Now, of all times, is a time to be bold in our thinking, bold in our planning, a time to look long and hard at the paths that are opening up before us, looking to the future, daring to imagine what the future might be, what we could be, how we, with God's help, might be in the months and the years ahead. Now, although we don't know exactly what that will look like or where the path will take us, we are Easter people. We can be full of hope and full of trust. And we can trust the one whose mighty power has raised Jesus from the dead and whose love for us is limitless. And whatever the mysteries of our route from here on in, we can be 
ensure that our destiny in Christ is good. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, it's a good job.
Lord our God, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we pray as our Saviour 
has taught us. break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. pray our prayer of spiritual communion so those who are joining us online in their worship can feel part of what we are doing. Thanks be to you Lord Jesus Christ for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be.
gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of heaven. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. 